I want to go in and adjust the fill for the, the path, I can do that as well. Just switch over to the path selection tool and then go in and um, say I want to change the fill to a gradient. I can do that here. And I want to get rid of the stroke. I can do that here. I should still have my bevel emboss and emboss added on there. Uh, and if I want to go in and change the nature of that gradient fill, again, I can change the angle here. You can see how that works. It just changes so it's now black to white. If I need to go in and change it, and this is black to transparent, which is probably going to work a little bit better. It just looks white because it's against a white background. Uh, so here, if I click on this, uh, this allows me to go in and adjust the color and you can see it goes from black to black because it goes from black to transparent. It's the way it should be. And here opacity is 100%. Here opacity is zero. So if I wanted to have like 10%, I could change that value. And if I want to change how quickly it moves from one to the other, just drag this center point here. Uh, inevitably, you'll accidentally add a third point. Now you could, this would be for a, a different transparency at the top, just drag it off if you don't want it. And if you wanted to add a third color point, which is going to be a little bit more useful, you can do it this way. And you can go in and again, you can position it by dragging it around. And this is actually uh, something that's very useful if you're using a black and white gradient. You can kind of adjust this. So this gives me kind of like a metallic highlight. And then if I put another shape on top of it, and here I'm just going to copy that layer. I'm going to turn off um, the bevel and emboss on the top one. So only the lower one is showing. So I get a little bit more depth. And then just maybe scale this down a bit. So I'm going to do that by going uh, transform path, scale. And I don't want to constrain the proportions because I want to make this like a little bit smaller. So I'm just going to do it like this and then just drag that in a little bit so that it, I have that background. And hit return. So I've got a background and I've got that little bit on top. I'm going to turn off the effects so it's just flat. I want the bevel and emboss behind it. And then this one, I am going to go in and change the color to something different. So I'm going to make it a solid color. I'm going to make it the blue. I have the uh, black with the, the black and white gradient, or excuse me, black to transparent gradient on the background. So it gives me an a interesting little kind of shift in the background. Now that I have this in place, um, I've got my rectangles. I've got my effects added. You can turn the effects up. They're still there, but you're just not seeing them by going here. And then I'm going to add my text. I'm going to use the same font I did before, which I believe I used Arial. I'm just going to type that in and choose Arial Bold. And I am going to use, I used 46 points before. Let's just use 46 points again. And I'm going to change that color to white. And again, if I go 255, 255, 255, that is going to give me a white text color. And I am just going to click here. You can draw a text box if you want. And I'm going to type my placeholder text. You can move it around um, in the same way that uh, we went in and aligned everything before. You can select all three layers and just do a vertical alignment there. So now the text is exactly in the center. I want to move this out a little bit though. So I'm just going to go to the text layer, switch to the move tool, and just move this so that it is over here in the within the tip text safe area. So I've got my basic lower third here. Um, I want to turn off the background and actually I could just get rid of the background entirely. 
And here you can see there's a little bit of transparency there. So I have that. I'm going to save this. Uh, it's going to be lower third basic.psd. Make sure I'm saving it to the same place. So I will go in to November 8th. And I saved it here. Logos. And I also want to export it as a PNG. So I'm going to go File, Export, Export as PNG Transparency. That looks fine. And you'll notice in Photoshop, rather than just getting a, a file that is essentially just the, the graphic with a little bit of a transparent background on it, here you get the whole kit and caboodle. You get the whole screen size, which is actually a little bit easier in terms of placing it. The canvas size is fine. Uh, we don't need to add uh, metadata. Um, I'm just going to go export all. It's going to go here. I'm going to add PST to the name. And there we go. So the next step would be adding, um, adding the graphic to it or adding another layer for additional text. So for that, um, I am just going to place embedded. And I'm going to use this to place my wave only. So this is the wave logo. Click OK. Uh, this looks a little bit small, but uh, what you do is just kind of generally place it first. Hit return. It becomes a new layer. And this little icon on the side indicates it's what's known as a smart object. Here, you, you'll notice we have a little icon here for the shape. That means it's a shape layer. And this means that if we wanted to add anything additional to it, like, I don't know, if we wanted to blur it, we would have to go in and actually rasterize it first. So make it not a vector anymore. If we want to size it up, though, all we have to do is go in and use Edit, uh, Transform, Scale, and hold down the Shift key and drag to make it a little bit larger. So that looks fine. Uh, I'm now going to use the Move tool just to shift it down. If you want this to be completely lined up, you could do it a slightly different way. Uh, you could go in and use the Align tool. I don't necessarily want it to be exactly centered, but I kind of liked the drop shadow on it before, so I would go in to add it here, go into Layer Effects again, uh, drop shadow, and again, you can choose the size, the distance, and the spread. And that will just create a little bit of extra oomph to it. And you'll notice as I change the, um, the angle of the global light here, it's changing it for the graphic underneath it. That's because it's set to use global light. If you want to have a different, a slightly different angle here, you can just uncheck that and you'll notice now as I change the drop shadow, it's not affecting the graphic underneath. I'm going to say usually you want to use global light for something like this because you want the shadow to be consistent for any element in the, in the image. Uh, I could also go in and use bevel and emboss if I want. This is going to create a much more 3D wave. Uh, that's probably a little bit too, the depth is probably a little bit too high there. But again, you can adjust it and it's going to be a different look. So effects, again, you can turn on and off. And the bevel and emboss really does give it a, a sense of, of being a 3D element. So here, the next step would be uh, I would use Save As. So it's either uh, File, Save As, or Command Shift, whoops, Command Shift S for Save As. And I'm going to call this Lower Third Logo. And now to export it. So Export, Export As. Transparency, it's got the width and height, excellent. Uh, export, and I'm just going to add a PSD to the name so I know where it came from. Also because I also have another lower third logo there too. And I have my lower third graphics. You follow very much a similar path to do the, uh, the locator and the more complicated lower third as well.